Hello and welcome to lesson 5.1.5, working with multiple variable equations. Before we get going, Gavin, are you going to come here? Gavin wants to say something else to you. What are you going to say to my students? Blue! Oh, I hope you didn't get scared. And we're well past Halloween by this point, but Gavin wanted to scare you a little bit. I know he scares me all the time. So, let's move on with our lesson today. Today we're going to be doing uh, looking at equations. And we're going to take those equations and we're going to get, in, get them into two different forms. The one we're really interested in is slope-intercept form. But I also want to show you how you can manipulate these to get them into standard form. When you get to your MCA test, you, know, you are required to be able to take equations and get them into either form. So we're going to do that today. First one, Gavin, that's enough scaring my students. All right. Question 547 in the book. 547 reads 2x plus y equals 3x minus 7. You'll notice I put the same equa equation for the slope-intercept form as I did for the standard form. What we do with those, however, is different. To get them to slope-intercept form, for this one, I subtracted 2x from both sides. When I do 2x from this side, obviously they cancel, and 3x minus 2x is x. So now, on this side, I am in slope intercept form. By the way, when I just have an x without a number there, what would the slope of that be? Hopefully you're saying to yourself, it would be 1, because 1 times any number is just that number itself. So the slope in this one would be 1. The b, which represents the y-intercept, would be negative 7. Now I'm going to record that information in just a second, but let's do the standard form. Standard form is a little different. For standard form, they want the x's and y's on the exact same side of the equation, and they want your numbers on the other side. So to get this into standard form, we actually have to subtract 3x from both sides. And when we do that, we end up with negative x plus y on the left side, and our number negative 7 on the right side. So now we are in standard form. All right, that's enough of standard form, however. Now... One of the things you're going to be doing when you go through the problems today is you're going to be telling me about the slope-intercept form. I told you earlier that's what I'm really interested in. So you're going to tell me what is the slope-intercept form. You're going to tell me what is the growth factor, which in this case is your slope. And you're going to tell me what the y-intercept is in ordered pair form. For example, 0, comma, negative 7. All right. Moving on to the next problem. We're still on question 47, but now I'm doing letter F, which for this one is probably some of the harder ones. Yes, you're going to be required to do B, C, D, and E again, just like yesterday. So, question 47. We start with this equation here, and I have it set up for both of them. For both of them, we have to do the same thing. We have to distribute. On the left side, I need to distribute that negative to the y and the 2, and on the right side, I need to distribute the 2 to the 2x and the 1. When I distribute, both sides end up with x minus y minus 2 equals 4x plus 2. Now, depending on the form we're looking for, we're going to do the slope-intercept form first. For the slope-intercept form, I'm first going to subtract my x from both sides, which leaves me with, and I'm also going to add 2 to both sides. So in order to get rid of this x right here, I'm subtracting x from here, and from here, and that's how I get my 3x. But I'm also adding 2 to both sides so I can get rid of the negative 2 over here. When I add 2 to this side, they cancel, but this side, 2 plus 2 would be 4. So I'm left with, currently, negative y equals 3x plus 4. However, to be in slope-intercept form, I need to be in y equals mx plus b format, not negative y. So I need to multiply everything through here by a negative 1. When I do that, I'm left with positive y equals negative 3x minus 4. You'll just notice how everything, the signs on each of these, change. So that's your slope-intercept form. I'm going to get back to this in just a moment, but I thought I would complete the standard form up here so you understand standard form. If you remember from about two minutes ago, standard form is when the x's and the y's are on the same side of the equation and your numbers are on the other side. So in order to do that, I need to do two things. I need to move this negative 2 
to this side by adding 2 to both sides. And I need to move this 4x to this side by doing the opposite or subtracting 4x or adding a negative 4x. When I do that, I end up with negative 3x minus y equals 4. Hopefully that makes sense. But again, I'm not worried about the standard form. We are worried about the slope-intercept form. So, somewhere down here, there it is. Now I can record, again, my y equals mx plus b format, which is y equals negative 3x minus 4, my growth rate, which is negative 3, and my y-intercept, which is 0, negative 4, when I leave that in coordinate form. By the way, when you record all of these here, the y equals mx plus b, the growth rate, and the y-intercept, you don't need to label this six different times for the six different problems. What I would do is have one heading for each of these, and then put down column A, B, C, D, E, and F, where you put all of those down right in order for that. So you're going to finish up question 47, and we will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.